If A is an M by N matrix with linearly independent columns, then applying the Gram-Schmidt process to these columns yields a very useful factorization of matrix A into the product of a matrix Q with orthonormal columns and an upper triangular matrix R. This is called the QR factorization. So here's the formal theorem. We want to let A be an M by N matrix with linearly independent columns. Then matrix A can be factored into A equals Q times R, where Q is an M by N matrix with orthonormal columns and R is an invertible upper triangular matrix. So this is a really useful factorization, but where does it come from? So let's look at how we derive this factorization. So to see how this QR factorization of matrix A arises, we begin by letting vector A sub 1 through vector A sub n be linearly independent columns of an M by N matrix A. We also want to go ahead and let vector Q sub 1 through vector Q sub n be the orthonormal vectors obtained by applying the Gram-Schmidt process to matrix A with normalizations. Now, by the Gram-Schmidt process, we know that for each i being equal to 1 through n, that the subspace W sub i is equal to the set spanned by the column vectors of matrix A, which is equal to the set spanned by these orthonormal vectors, vector Q sub 1 through vector Q sub i. Now, by definition of a spanning set, then we know that there are scalars, say scalar r sub 1i through r sub ii, such that we can rewrite vector a sub i as a linear combination of these orthonormal vectors. Or in other words, we have vector a sub 1 being equal to scalar r sub 1 1 multiplied by vector q sub 1. We have vector a sub 2 being equal to r sub 1, 2 times vector q sub 1 plus r sub 2, 2 times vector q sub 2. And we continue all the way till we get to vector a sub n, which is equal to scalar r sub 1, n times vector q sub 1 plus r sub 2, n times vector q sub 2 plus all the way up to scalar r sub n, n times vector q sub n which we can now rewrite in the equivalent matrix form. We have the matrix whose column vectors are vector a sub 1 through vector a sub n being equal to the matrix whose column vectors are q sub 1 through q sub n multiplied by the upper triangular matrix whose scalars are r sub 1 i through r sub i i which is in fact matrix A is equal to matrix Q multiplied by matrix R. Exactly what we were looking for. Woohoo! Now before this proof is officially complete, there's a couple of things that we need to verify. The first is, is matrix Q or does matrix Q really have orthonormal columns? Well, Keep in mind that since the set of vectors q sub 1 through q sub n are orthonormal vectors obtained from the Gram-Schmidt process, then yes, definitely the columns of matrix Q are orthonormal. Another thing that we can observe from this derivation is that the diagonal entries of matrix R are all non-zero. Or in other words, the scalars R sub ii cannot be equal to zero. Now, that's a bold statement, so let's look at this a little closer. Let's suppose the opposite. Let's suppose that scalar r sub i i is equal to zero. Well, then vector a sub i is a linear combination of the vectors q sub 1 through q sub i minus 1 
And so vector a sub i is in the subspace w sub i minus 1, which is equal to the set spanned by the vectors q sub 1 through q sub i minus 1. Then this also implies that vector a sub i is a linear combination of the vectors a sub 1 through vector a sub i minus 1. But wait a second. Since the set of vectors a sub 1 through a sub i are linearly independent, this is literally impossible. So we've reached a contradiction. The scalar r sub i i being equal to 0 is false. And therefore, the diagonal entries must be non-zero. Woohoo! Now, the last little observation that we can make here is that since matrix R is in upper triangular form, then by a previously established theorem, matrix R is invertible, which officially completes our proof for the QR factorization of matrix A. Woohoo! We have fully verified that for an M by N matrix A with linearly independent columns, that this matrix can be factored into the product of a matrix Q, who is an M by N matrix with orthonormal columns, and a matrix R that is an invertible upper triangular matrix. So let's now continue our exploration of this QR factorization by looking at the following examples.